Hi folks. Uh, so at Lockpick Villages, uh, and when I'm teaching, uh, there's always at least a couple of uh, left-handed people who uh, ask for some extra help because, well, I'm right-handed and uh, most of our instructions are just sort of defaulting to uh, right-handed pickers. Uh, but I've been getting some help from some left-handed pickers and I've uh, been practicing a lot uh, to try to be able to demonstrate at least some basic uh, left-handed picking techniques. So what I have here today are a pair of Master Lock number 5s, uh, the regular one and the Magnum version. Uh, we're going to start with the regular one because these uh, will open uh, regardless of which direction you turn the plug. So this is a good way to demonstrate uh, a situation where you can simply mirror uh, right-handed techniques. So notice that really the only difference here is that I'm going to go counterclockwise because I'm tensioning with my right hand. I'm going to use a thinner hook here just because of the way the warding is shaped on this keyway. So you can get around that turn. And just like usual, reach in, we're feeling around, and I think I've got binder, so I get three or four. Okay, got like number three, like number two, number one. Set, try this again. Now keep in mind that I am not actually left handed, so my sensitivity and control with my left hand is really not anywhere near as good as it is normally. So I'm going to screw this up a, a bit. There we go. So I have set possibly on one. Remember, you still have to follow the same rules about tensioning and uh, pick control and everything. There we go. This is number four. So we've got an open going counterclockwise uh, by just mirroring right-handed techniques. Out of the way now. Uh, but what about this guy? You can see he's got a rotation limiter. Uh, he only wants to be opened uh, clockwise. So there are a few options we have uh, using a standard turning tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to just seat it here. Uh, we've got to pull it out a little bit just to clear these rivets. And what we're going to do, there's a couple of ways that I've seen. Uh, sometimes you can sort of do this little it's a bit of a contortionist trick, but uh, it does actually allow you similar control to when uh, a right-handed person would be using their index finger going over the top. Uh, the other thing that I've seen, this is a little bit trickier, but you can use your thumb to tension. Uh, we usually, I usually don't recommend it just because of the relative lack of control on the thumb, but it does work. So, just like this, and now you're just picking with the pins uh, below you, or on the bottom. And so we're going to put our pick in, hunt around for some binding pins. And I think we've got something binding. 
coming. Said I definitely overset some things there. We'll work our way in, find the first binding pin, which I think is number four here. Move forward, still hunting. Number three, give us a little bit of a click. Number two isn't binding. Number one, there we go. Very close. Something just needs a little bit of a kick. Okay, overset again. Reset. Okay, number four. the more frustrated I get here, the worse my ability to control that tension correctly is going to get. So four, three, two, and one. Keep screwing this up every time I try to do this on camera. You can do it just fine off camera. I'm practicing for this, but the moment I try to get it on film, screw up everything. Of course, it doesn't help that I've got my arms extended to get around the camera and keep everything in view. Well, there we go. Alright, so the left-handed pickers out there, keep that in mind, and it all comes down to practice. So, until next time everyone, have fun, and happy picking. <laughs>